Hey you guys. An interesting question from a student this week. Um, generally, which side do you castle on? Or more particularly, because obviously there's no hard and fast rule, um, but what are the considerations for choosing to castle kingside or queenside or even sometimes not at all? So let's just go over some of the basic principles for castling and then I'll show you just a few a few examples from games I've played read, uh, fairly recently. I mean, some openings, for example, you will the the opening is designed for you to castle one way, and you will rarely castle the other way. Okay, um, for example, I'll, I'll show you one or two maybe in the, in the Dutch later on, which is uh, where the where Black will practically always castle kingside. That's just the the idea of the opening. It's kind of built into the whole thing. Same thing, for example, if you play like the the King's Indian defense, you know, with um, with this kind of setup, and then here. I mean, you are when you fianchetto a bishop like that with with the knight here. Very often, the plan is to support that bishop with the king. Okay, and this is a nice kind of solid defensive setup. The knight defending the pawn there, the bishop defending the dark squares, and so on and so forth. So um, whatever openings you play, figure out for yourself if the opening generally expects or demands that you to castle one way, okay? Um, another consideration, of course, is where your opponent's bishops are. So, um, for example, if, if both the bishops have figured out their way to, for example, here, right, that means that their, their danger where you have to look at where are those bishops looking at the at the back crank let's let's pull up the um analysis board just to make life a bit easier right um we'll clear that so you know if, if your king's down here for example and your opponent's bishops are like this right then they are looking which bit of the back rank you know are they are they observing they're clearly observing this area of the back rank. So that means there's going to be naturally more pressure on that side of the board, okay? Now, if you were to put your king on this side of the board, so remember, your king always starts on e1, okay? So he can either castle to there or to there. So it always goes to the same kind of color square. But here, these bishops are now ineffectual, right? They're, they're not worrying the king whatsoever, okay? Another consideration to bear in mind is going to be pawns. So if your opponent has already started to move a line of pawns up one side of the board, then those pawns could arrive, if you castle the same way, those pawns could arrive um, and mess up your, your king's bodyguard, right? The pawns around your king. So that's one consideration. Sometimes you'll want to castle on the opposite side of the board to your opponent. Um, <clears throat> and generally, the idea is going to be that both sides will try and push pawns against the opponent's king. Because they've got their, their free pawns on that side of the board, so it's quite often like a, a, a pawn storm race in those kinds of uh, considerations. So I think those are kind of the main things. One other thing that, that you bear in, might bear in mind as well particularly for castling uh, queenside, say for example, is if the, if the C file is empty, or the, no, let's say the D file is empty, right? So if the D file is empty, and you know your opponent's king is over here, I'm gonna move these, these things around, right? But um, sometimes you can find yourself with attacking options of castling straight away there, and putting your rook straight onto the open D file or semi open D file. So it'd be semi open if there's pawns of one color on it. Uh, it's closed if there's pawns of both colors on it. Um, but let's say that pawn's not there. You know, it, it can be a good attacking move to choose the castle and put your rook straight onto a semi open file. By the same token, let's say your king's here and, um, you know, save. For some reason, the f-pawns have disappeared, which does happen. Uh, you know, so this we see this quite often in the Vienna 
Gambit, for example, where I've pushed F4 and then tried to capture there, for example. Um, then suddenly castling kingside and putting your rook straight on to the open file or semi-open file can be advantageous as well. So let's just run through a bunch of games. I've just I've just pulled out you know, nine or ten random games that I've played recently. Okay, we'll just look at the considerations. Okay, so this we have the French. I'm playing with the white pieces. Um, French exchange, knight comes out, bishop comes out, pinning the knight. Oh yeah, one other thing, of course, that you've got to bear in mind is, let's look at this game. <clears throat> it's generally a good idea to castle relatively promptly in a game. Okay. Now, obviously, on your king's side, there are two pieces that have to move in order for you to castle. In fact, there's three, because the bishop has to move, but in order for the bishop to move, one of these light squared pawns has to move. Right? It's dark squared in, in black's case, and the knight has to jump out. Okay. If you were going to castle long, then you've got a knight and a bishop and a queen, all of which have to move. So, in general, you will find that um, it's quicker. You will you will get the opportunity quicker to castle kingside than you will to castle queenside. Um, but again, you know, it all depends on on the game. It depends on the opening. It depends on. On how things go. Sometimes casting queenside makes a lot more sense. Uh, okay, so let's let's run through this one. So French defense, French exchange, knights come out, bishop pins knight, and now, as a lot of players do, they will try and just develop their kingside minor pieces in preference to the queenside minor pieces for this very reason. Right, bishop comes out there, and white castles straight away. Okay, and castling is good. It gets your king to safety. Okay, but now look as well. Right, we have an open e file, so castling kingside makes sense because now my rook is just one move away from delivering check and maybe causing some headaches for black. All right, let's look at another one. And here we have the Scandinavian queen comes out again, bishop comes out, and again on move six, white is castling. So very kind of similar, similar setup. Um, getting castled soon early can be advantageous particularly if it comes with any kind of attacking opportunity right so if you've got semi-open files in the middle um it's it's no bad thing to get a rook centralized quite early on okay however i would generally say that you should be looking for tactical opportunities first um because castling is often a bit more passive than a developing move but again you know, castling can be active, can be passive. Okay, so let's move on to another example. E4, E5, this is the center game, Danish Gambit. And here, Queen comes out, obviously. In the Danish Gambit, actually, very often what, you, what you're trying to do is you're trying to prevent black from castling. Here, black gets to castle, and then white simply castles as well. Same side, obviously, there's very little cover on the queen side here. So you'll quite often find one side castles, the other side castles as well, while there's a brief kind of pause in development and attacking ideas. Here's another one. And this is the French exchange variation, but I'm playing with the black pieces here. Now C5 has been pushed, right? So this just makes it very unlikely that I'm gonna to want to stick my king on, on C8, right? It's just far too much fresh air around that part of the board, okay? So bishop comes out with check, block the check. Another check from the queen, block that with the bishop, and castles and castles, okay? Both castling kingside again. Castling kingside is certainly far more common than castling queenside. Here's another. And this is, so we've got d4 from white and then f5 from black. So this is, this is the Dutch and I will always castle kingside in the Dutch. Pretty much, okay. So um, we've given up a pawn there. Recapture the pawn, grab the bishop, bishop comes out, trade off and castle, All right? Straightforward. Almost never send the king this way in the Dutch. I don't know if I've ever done it. And then there's some openings like very often with the black lion that, that I played for yeah, a couple of years. Um, 
very often you won't castle then. The, the plan isn't even to castle. You know, you can just, just stick the king somewhere in the middle where it's got lots of pawns and pieces around it and use the back rank for manoeuvring your forces around and try and get an attack. Okay, so here we've got the Karo Khan, a fantasy variation, takes, takes. So now white's got decent central control. And look, semi-open f-file, right? Like we often see in the Vienna. Knight comes out, bishop comes out, and castles kingside early on, move seven, right? But this is already now eyeing down on the f7 square with a rook. As soon as that knight moves, there's a very big danger. Okay, so queen comes round, knight doesn't move yet. Maybe that would have been a good idea actually to initiate some, some threats at this point rather than just developing. Okay, and the knight still hasn't moved. Okay, and uh, now black does get to castle. So maybe, yeah, it would have been a good idea to initiate some threats maybe earlier on in that one. Okay, what's this one? Again, a Dutch. Okay, Leningrad Dutch, very, very typical. Castle and Kingside is the plan for that opening. And what do we have here? The Reti Gambit. Okay, so this starts with a Reti opening with one knight to f3. D5, C4 takes. Okay, we've given the pawn back. And. Ah. This is kind of interesting. Very odd game, this one. And there's a hanging knight. Why didn't I just grab the hanging knight? What a plonker. Look at that. Hanging, dangling right there in front of my nose. Ridiculous. Okay. So we got the knight anyway. And here, um, obviously there's, there's options now for black to castle either way. Okay, so we can stick the king on C8 or G8. Now, this bishop is looking down at this side of the board. Okay. The queen is currently looking down at the king, so it's no bad thing to get the king out of line of that lady there, right? Uh, this bishop is no threat whatsoever, so where would you go? Also notice we have a semi-open F file there, whereas the C file is, uh, well, in fact, the D file is also semi-open. Okay, so those are the two squares where the rook could end up in castle situation. And here, black chooses the castle kingside. Okay. And uh, so on. And then final example. This is a 15 minute rapid game. Center game. And okay. Now knight comes out to c3 and here we have the semi-open D file situation, okay? Um, this bishop's quite nicely placed. It's preventing black from castling, can't castle through check. And now we castle on move nine, castling long, but putting the rook directly onto there. And that's the one difference between castling queenside and castling kingside, okay? When you go um, kingside, the king goes from here to G1, and then the rook, goes to f1, okay? So the rook ends up on this square rather than this square. So castling queen side, the rook is already centralized, which means it's in on either the d or the e files. When you castle king side, the rook ends up on here and has one more step in order to centralize itself. Because very often, because I would say so often, uh, one dark squared pawn has to move at the start of the game and one light squared pawn has to move, right? In order for the bishops to develop, okay? So the dark squared bishop can't get out unless one of these pawns moves. That's just a fact in chess. And likewise, light squared bishop can't get out unless the E or G pawn move. That is why very often you will have, the first moves will very often be the central pawns moving because that allows the queen out and both bishops to come out, right? So what that very often means later on in, in the game is that these pawns have engaged with the enemy in the center of the board, right? Very often there will be there will have been some exchanges of pawns at that point in time. They might have captured inwards or outwards, or it doesn't matter. But that's why the D and the E files are very often important to get your rooks onto, okay? Because there's more space up that file. The rook can have more control, more influence over the game up that file. And of course, the rooks are then lined up with the center of the board, 
which is the prime real estate on the board. This is like the, you know, the peak of the mountain. Uh, whereas these squares around are like the, you know, the slopes of the mountain. So it's it's kind of you have a bit of an advantage having pieces here. Like we say very often, a knight, if it's as long as it's in this square anywhere, it's exerting its maximum influence over the board. Likewise, a bishop, you know, if, if a bishop is in the middle of the board, it's looking potentially at lots and lots of squares, right? Whereas a um, a bishop that's you know, somewhere like here, for example, is looking, it's got, it's got fewer diagonals. It's got less, potential less influence over the board. But bishops can still be very effective fianchetto. So that's the other idea that you see very often, is instead of the central pawns moving, you'll see these knights pawns moving, and then the bishops can sneak in behind those, and that's called the fianchetto. So there you go. I mean, there's no there's no hard and fast rule to which side to castle. You need to consider castling. I mean, I, I do in general recommend castle um, promptly, um, unless there's a, a pressing tactical threat or opportunity. Then it's a good idea to do it. It's a good idea to think about centralising your rooks. Don't neglect castling till it's too late. Um, as to which side to go. Pay attention to your opponent's bishops. Pay attention to your opponent's pawns. If they look like they could be starting a pawn storm at one side of the board, maybe you don't want to be putting your king on that side of the board. All right? um, think about semi-open files and open files. Think about centralizing your rooks. What's the most effective way to get your rooks into the game as quickly as possible as well? Um, and also think about sometimes castling as an act of aggression. So, you know, castling and putting your rook straight on d1 or d8 if you go if you castle long can be very good but likewise if the f file is open for any reason as well then castling kingside and putting your rook straight onto f1 or f8 can likewise be um, a good move that applies more pressure to your opponent so there you go that's my uh, whistle stop guide to which side to castle and the the answer is there is no answer all right you decide, but decide for good reasons. Decide for positive reasons of your own based on the shape of the game. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching. See you later.